welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of Wiley's Weekly Wisdom. I apologize out of the gates, I've got allergies, I live in the Northwest, and it's allergy season, so I will get through this. I am committed to making this video happen for you guys. There's a lot going on. We just had the Federal Reserve increase rates for the 10th time, and that is that they took it from zero about a year and a half ago to uh, 5% on the federal funds rate, uh, the 5% to five and a quarter target range, and that happened just today. So one of the biggest questions we get, and we've gotten really over the last year and a half, is with interest rates increasing at a pretty steady clip, why are interest rates going up so fast and housing values aren't also responding to that in such a way that many people have predicted, that is that we would see a housing market correction. Why have we not seen the housing market correction? It's a much more basic and fundamental math equation that's in play here. You have this many people looking to buy a home, this many homes for sale. That challenge has pre-existed the pandemic, pre-existed COVID probably for about 10 years, and it was expected to go on for another 10 years prior to the pandemic. We've now since delayed construction on homes. We've now since had fewer people even listing their homes. Many reasons exist that have caused housing to hold value. One, we have a very high shortage. So high shortage, it's kind of an oxymoron, extreme shortage, I should say, of housing inventory. Homes for sale are at near record lows. Those record lows were actually set during the pandemic when the housing frenzy happened and people were shifting what they were doing, they were working from home, they were having you know, opportunities to move out of urban areas into suburban areas or into other states that were deemed more affordable, more livable, whatever the value that they saw with the move. And those factors cause a heavy amount of real estate uh, traffic. A lot of transactions took place. However, the Fed, with seeing that inflation had been up during the pandemic, with seeing that home prices had been up during the pandemic, they're worried about affordability for folks, they're worried about affordability for first time home buyers, they're worried about stability in the housing market. With respect to wage increases uh, during the pandemic and also post the pandemic, some people are in very high demand. Uh, employers are, are looking for workers that want to show up and work and are paying premiums for folks if they need them desperately. You're seeing these factors that the Federal Reserve has gone, whoa, time out, we're going to increase the interest rates and go so on a very heavy and steady uh, rate of increases. So the federal funds rate has basically been increased 5% over the last year and a half. That is a massive jump in interest rates on the short-term basis that do affect long-term interest rates. And we've seen effectively a doubling of interest rates on the mortgage side on the fixed rate products since the, since the end of the pandemic and since the beginning of the Federal Reserve's rapid increase in interest rates. Now, why have housing values not settled out? Why have housing values not fallen? Why have we not had a housing crash? Because we have been historically low in supply of homes for about a decade. So that has been amplified with COVID, that has been amplified with the pandemic and the slowdown of activity during the pandemic. And now we're having a time in which family formation has just been stacking up. It's like an assembly line that has a bunch of boxes that are stacking up at the end and they're starting to fall off the assembly line. People want to get into housing. More people want to get into housing than there are homes for sale. Because there are so few homes for sale, you have stabilized housing values. You have about a 45% increase in the median home price from the second quarter of 2020 to the fourth quarter of 2022. So in about a year and a half's time again, you have a massive increase in the value of homes. And that massive increase in the value of homes has only come off about 1% or so. Let's just say plus or minus 1% depending on the market and the geography. That is a rapid increase with just a tiny, tiny settling out correction at the top. And that it means that housing is incredibly stable, incredibly uh, solid, incredibly able to withstand 
pretty severe market conditions when it comes to a pandemic, when it comes to rising interest rates, when it comes to all of those factors, you have strength in housing. Why is that? So there's a few things. Again, we talked about the supply and demand. That's a very, very impactful factor with housing, with housing values, with people wanting to buy a house. You have rents increasing over this period of time. So you have the alternative is to uh, not purchase but rent. People have been doing that and they're finding one that uh, rents increase over time. Housing payments may all said, you know, taxes, insurance, things that also make up part of the housing cost. Those can go up over time, but not at the same clip as rent going up over time. You also have needs. You have family formation, you have people looking to become a family, you have people looking to grow their family, you have people looking to grow their family with pets. They need room, they need to move out, they need to, to buy their first home. You have the other side of that. You have the downsizing effect. You have people looking to retire. You have people with empty nest situations where they had a house that was excellent for a family and now they're looking to downsize, maybe buy two homes, one in the current market and one in the second home marketplace that they can enjoy. So you have a lot of factors that relate to supply and demand and the demand component there that has been put on hold because of another thing tied to the interest rate increases and that is people are rate locked into their house. What do I mean by rate locked into the house? Normally that is applied to when you actually take out a home mortgage and are looking to buy a house or refinance a house, you lock your interest rate and then close on the house. But people have a two, a three, a 4% starting number in that interest rate so twos, threes, and fours, that when rates came up to where they are today, people said, hey, I'm gonna time out. I'm not gonna sell. I'm not gonna sell and buy the same house across town or in another state and pay a lot more for the cost of that house in the form of financing. I'm not gonna buy another house that's bigger. I'm not gonna upsize in the case of the fact that that would be a lot more expense. I'm not even gonna downsize because that might be more expense on a monthly basis. So I'm gonna sit tight in the house I'm in and not allow it to be released back in the housing inventory. I'm not gonna participate that way. So you've got people sitting tight in their homes very comfortably, very affordably, with record levels of equity, so they're not in a hurry to get out. They're not concerned it's a housing crash. The people that want to buy homes are seeing this steady decline in the amount of new listings come on. You actually do have builders now, during the, during the uptick in interest rates, you had builders kind of hold off and not want to get high centered like happened 15 years ago. That was probably a good move, but now they've realized that other people aren't listing their homes, so they need to put more housing inventory into the marketplace, and that's what they do. They build homes and, and construct them and then sell them. So that is going to be an increase in the kinds of business being done over the next few years with respect to product mix out in the marketplace where you have existing homes for sale, but a more of the percentage of those homes for sale and aggregate are gonna be tied to new construction. And therefore, you have still this undersupply piece uh, underlying all of the, the housing in the next projected 10 years, which is probably, I haven't heard a new projection, but it's probably extended out now, and it's probably gonna be a lot longer to get to a balanced marketplace where buyers and sellers uh, basically have equal footing. So even with these increases in interest rates, even with the rapid increase in home values that has gone on during the pandemic and, and even held afterwards, you are going to see that we are still gonna be in a short housing supply for quite some time. Now people ask all the time, what's gonna happen when rates come down maybe a little bit as we enter into what's very likely a recession and the estimate that's going to happen there is actually people estimate or predict that we're going to see even more activity in housing once some buyers, uh, once, excuse me, once some sellers decide that it's a good time to list their house because they're more comfortable with the trade-off of letting go of the existing excellent rate that they have, getting a good market rate at the time. You have more inventory come on that way, but you have this whole list of now a couple of years of people looking to buy that are stacked on each other that are trying to get into that marketplace. So don't expect that you will see housing values fall necessarily during that time either. 
as more inventory comes on, you're just gonna see more activity because it's kind of pent up, it's pent up demand that is on that assembly line. All those boxes are getting backed up on that assembly line and they're looking to buy a home. I hope that this helped explain the current market conditions, helped explain why you're not seeing a settling out of home values uh, over the long haul and even maybe that housing market correction. And some markets obviously might be having that across the US, but not most. And the majority are actually holding very tight, if not now starting to see multiple, multiple bid offers on homes again, like we had just a, a couple years ago. Thank you for watching season one, episode one of Wiley's Weekly Wisdom. Hope you found value in it. Hope to see you again for the next episode.